What's up guys? 223 Frank the Tank here. And I'm going to be doing do, ah, I'm going to be doing another episode of Flight School for the FA26B. Today's lesson will be air to air refueling and just my general tips and how to do it pretty efficiently. So we're going to go to this quick flight and we're going to start off an easy air refuel or I, I don't know if the tanker is uh, in a bank or an orbit or not. I don't really remember though. I also have a mission for that. So you're gonna make sure you're low on fuel, perfect. And we're just gonna go for an empty loadout. No one really need to be full of weapons, so we're just gonna imagine that we got back from a sortie and we dumped our tanks, we dumped our weapons. We don't really need ah, we don't really need the tanks because they've already been um whatchamacallit? They've already been used up, but normally you'd be able to refuel them, you know, in DCS or real life. But for some reason, we can't really do that yet in this game. So because we can't really refuel our tanks, there's no point in grabbing any. So let's reset ourselves a little bit. Oh, there we go. It's been a while since I've played. So be playing again. Alright, so first things first, well, definitely way too far forward. Probably have to. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no, way too close. Okay, whatever. So, <clears throat> first thing we're gonna do is open our fuel port, right? Let's get it. No, not light vision, just the visor. There we go. Alright. So, I'm, I'm a hot mess tonight. So uh, let's slow ourselves down. I believe the tanker goes at 374 knots. So let's, let's match our speed with the tanker. And uh, obviously there's no trim really in this or fuel open. The trimming is automatically done in this game. So we don't have to worry so much about trimming out the plane. You can just fly it normally. That's what I do. It's not like DCS where it's a lot more, you know, complex to do something like tanking. So we're gonna open our fuel port. Get ourselves prepared. Sorry that was kind of a mess, but it'd be like that sometimes. So we're gonna speed up a little bit, close in on them, and you want to be reaching 374 knots. That's the once you're, you know, behind the tanker. So we're gonna just close in very slowly. And the thing about precision throttle in any fight sim really is that when you really want to hold your position, you cannot keep your hand in one sp in one place. You know what I mean? You need to always be rocking it forward and backwards, waiting for the engine idle to drop, but always rocking it so it never stays stationary. It's either dropping or increasing. It doesn't stay stationary. That way you can kind of just play around with the speed, slowly lower it so you don't lower it too much. We're trying to catch up right now, so I'm gonna kind of speed it up a little bit. And don't be afraid to use your air brake. An air brake is a real easy way to start slowing down, but do manage your difference in velocity. You don't want to hit the air brake and then you're 30 knots slower relatively, because that ca that's just gonna cause the tanker to keep going forward, and you're not gonna ever catch up. So right now we're at a 10 knot closure rate because we're 10 knots faster than a tanker. It's kind of a slow closure rate, that's a little bit better if we're closer, but from this far out, and I'm saying far out, but it's not a ton out, and we're at a 20 knot closure, we're going to slow it down a little bit, but you know, we're just playing with the throttle, just getting in there slowly. I believe he's at 374, but I could be wrong. In that case, you just have to figure it out once you're behind him. Playing around with the air brake, playing around with everything. So, if you look at my throttle bar indicator, constantly moving. And uh, you, you kind of want to have the same angle of bank as him. Let's see, we're at 378. We're, we're almost stationary compared to him. So, let's speed up a little bit. We, we're starting to get lights now. It's going to drop the boom anytime now. There goes the boom. So we, we want to fly below that. So let's slow down a little bit. Speed up a little bit. Let's 
takes a lot of precision, a lot of practice, a lot of patience to really get this, you know, properly. <laughs> One mistake I did at first when doing this is uh, I thought that the position for the pro was at the behind the cockpit, like in real life on the F-15 and F-22. But it's actually on the nose, similar to the A-10. So now we're plugged up. I'm gonna match our speed a bit, rock the throttles, I might pop out for a sec. Oh. Okay, it's a PI pilot induced oscillation. So uh, we're gonna let off a little bit. Just relax yourselves, wiggle your toes. And uh, you know, nobody's perfect, I'm not perfect. But you know, you get more practice, you get better. You put in the time to learn, you're gonna get better. oscillation again which tends to happen when you're at the exact same speed as a tanker it makes you go a little, a little crazy my headset, my headset is also a little bit blurry right now because it's fogging up from some moisture or something so let's just get a little bit closer keep it on the green but you know as long as you're not too close and not too far out so this would be like the perfect position for right now i'm getting too close so i gotta slow down but you don't want to drop all the throttle ah, drop the throttle like i did this was really sensitive using a vr controller but you know it takes a lot of practice for sure Luckily tanking is really quick in this compared to DCS. DCS will spend about like 8 minutes to get a full tank in a Tomcat. Here it's about like maybe a minute and a half being plugged up. I'm not sure how long I've been plugged up right now but it should be full in a second. Boom, full. We'll close off the fuel port and that's it, you're done. You could usually break right so that's my fault. There we have it. We got full fuel. You can either carry on your mission if you still have weapons, or you can, uh, you know, return to base safely, return to your carrier, and do what you got to do. So that went, you know, pretty smoothly. I want to disconnect twice. Don't take it too hard if you do. It happens. It's really not not a big deal. You just have to keep practicing. I'm obviously not perfect either. So let's exit out. And uh, I downloaded a workshop pack, Advanced Topics. For, I'm not really sure who made it, so I'm sorry if I didn't credit you. And we've got a super hard refuel, so let's see. From a tanker, flying a tight figure of eight in the middle of the night. So I haven't done this yet. <laughs> it's going to be quite a bit of a challenge, I'd imagine. So let's try to get a little bit more comfortable right now. But that was, that was, I was like really far back. So first things first, my vision. Let's get a radar on. I'm trying to locate the tanker a little bit easier. So there he is, range out, navigation. Let's try to zoom in on that. There's our tanker. challenge. Got it. 
you'll never encounter a tanker that flies like this in any sort of real life or DCS or you know mission situation because <laughs> he's just straight up flying like a fighter jet I mean yeah it's definitely gonna be a super refuel but no tanker would fly like this so I, I kind of feel like this is kind of a waste of time trying to show you how to refuel in such a randomly flying tanker so ooh, you don't want to hit it uh, I might just hit the moon that's embarrassing bother trying that because uh, it's way too erratic and you would just never encounter that in any sort of realistic mission. So let's just, we'll finish that lesson off for today and uh, I'll do my next lesson on the F45A or is it F45B? I don't remember. The F45A, which is interesting that I named it the A model because in real life the F35A would be the regular Air Force model that doesn't have the VTOL capability, but the Bravo model is the one with VTOL and Stavo. So we'll definitely do some more topics on the F45 as well as the FA26B. I might get into the AB42, but it's really, it's not entirely my cup of tea. It's not my favorite looking plane. I, I guess I, I prefer a stuff that's more based on real planes than kind of this weird little Halo Warthog, no Warthog, ah, that sounds stupid right now, alright, <laughs> let's just ignore what I said, anyways, if you like this video, and you want me to do more content, let me know what you'd like to see, and uh, peace out, like and subscribe, and see you guys on the next one.